guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cthulhu, a deck builder, the expansion of a hor the horror of Dunwich, in which you'll be playing with two to five investigators, or two to six, and it takes about maybe an hour to play the game. It is a classic deck builder in the sense that you're going to get ten cards in your deck, you're going to get stagger cards along with sleuth cards, and they're basically going to give you either moxie, or you can take three health and three sanity damage from the stagger cards. However, the stagger cards aren't something you're going to normally just play on your own, there are certain cards in the game which make you play them, which will give you some sort of negative advantage. In the game, you'll be using Moxie to deal the damage and to deal to gain the currency to buy the cards. Uh, there's going to be a Mythos deck in which you're going to be able to um, draw these cards and certain things are going to happen, along with a library of cards in which you can purchase things like gear or like allies or other great stuff like actions to uh, go against the Cthulhu or other uh, Mythos cards or other Elder Gods, I should say, such as... Uh, uh, this is Mir Ithri Ithra, Aleb, Gunshal, Yog Sagoth, Yig, the Great Dreamer, a bunch of other unique cards uh, from the uh, new expansion of the game. Along with that, there's going to be mythos locations such as the Ancient Tomb or Dunwich or the Mountains of Madness as the Mass Grave and a Shipwreck and so on and so forth. Sometimes you're going to come across some great powerful artifacts like, uh, for instance, Excalibur or even strong monsters like the Dunwich Horror. In the game, you're going to simply be drawing cards and playing them to purchase and fight against monsters, and there is a ton of minions in the game as well, like the Serpent Man, or uh, for instance the Formless Spawn, as well as even Deep Ones. Your character is going to have specific abilities, such as the Acrobat is going to have a backstory, a special ability, and even something that happens after death. He'll have a Stamina and a, uh, a, a Sanity chart, which will have certain things happen to you if you take damage too much, you can die, and if you take too much Sanity loss, you'll go insane. Throughout the game, if you can defeat the Elder Gods, you're going to win. However, if you guys die, the game is over. Uh, that is the basic idea of the game Cthulhu. Let's go ahead and take a look at the contents. Here's the contents for the game Cthulhu, uh, the Horror of Dunwich, in which case you're going to be getting a bunch of new cards that you haven't seen before, along with a bunch of additional cards from the original base game that are different. You're going to be getting your library of cards, which you can purchase things from. You got minions, mythos cards, mythos locations, which are new, and of course, Elder Gods. These are all newer cards, though, with new gods involved, along with some special cards like the Excalibur and the Horror of Dunwich. You're also going to be getting these cards here, which are used for health tracking. You're going to be getting these little tokens here that attach to your character sheets that you'll be using for your sanity and for your health, which is pretty sweet here. You just go ahead and simply put it on just like that, and that will signify how much health and sanity you have. You're also going to be getting a plethora of new characters, along with some old ones returning, like the Time Traveler, who's gotten a little older, but he realized he didn't solve the first problem of the uh, original game, so he's come back to finish what he started. You're also going to be getting a deck of cards, which is 10 cards. You got stagger cards, three of each different type, and then the rest are sleuth cards, along with a bunch of dice. The new cards included in the game are something like this one here, the Mythos Location, this is the Nameless City, along with ally cards that come into the field and will not, aren't going to be removed unless something says so, and they have a special bonus that affect people, that help people out, along with gear cards. You can have two of these guys here in front of you, and they are basically passive abilities that stay on the field, which are super, super useful. That is the basic components of the game. There's quite a lot of cards here, as you can see, and quite a lot of characters. Let's go ahead and talk about how to play. So beginning the game Cthulhu, you're going to start off by putting out the library and putting five cards face up to which you can buy cards. Every player is also going to get their own unique character, and you're going to set up for stamina and for sanity, the highest max for each of them. You're also going to give each player a deck of ten cards, three of which are going to be the stagger cards, and the rest will be the sleuth cards, which are moxie. And moxie are used in combat for damage and in the preparation phase for purchasing. So it's like a money and combat system. You're also going to take out, depending on the difficulty of the game, in a two-player game, we're going to start out with an easy mode. You're going to choose one of the Elder Gods, which I went ahead and selected this guy here, Mythkoria, as well as drawing a Mythos card to start the game off. Mythos cards are generally going to be either actions or events, or they're going to summon monsters to the field. After you've gone ahead and done that, you're also going to make sure you have a Mythos, lo or mythos location out, which is going to progress the game in a negative or positive light, depending on the one you get. For instance, this Mass Grave here is going to uh, say that the first minion that dies each round is going to be resurrected and becoming active again. So that's a pretty nasty one. You're also going to make sure that you set out all the creatures 
features in the game because these are actually not going to be just drawn from a deck, but simply chosen based on the Mythos cards. Make sure you go ahead and set up the health uh, of each of the creatures if you would like with these little cards here along with the tokens, and then you're ready to begin. Each player is going to start off by doing their preparation phase in which they're going to draw their five cards. They're going to play the cards of, that are worth Moxie to buy cards from the deck and replace the cards that are bought. You can do your turn orders in any order that you like. I could go, then you could go, then our friend could go, or in any order because we're all playing cooperatively. After that phase has been done, then you're going to go on to the next phase, which is basically going to be uh, Mythos cards are going to be flipped over, the Elder God is going to do his damage, and the monsters are going to do their damage, and then you're going to be able to attack in any turn order as well. You can use the cards that you've purchased as well as the cards that you've kept uh, as Moxie to do damage to either the Elder God or the minions. However, depending on the Elder, uh, elder location or the Mythos location, certain things will happen. Like, for instance, this one over here is going to regenerate creatures. After you've killed the Elder God, the game is going to end. However, if the game is not ended by the first round, which it won't be, then you're going to simply do the reset phase. You're going to discard all the cards that are currently in your hand and in play that are not gear or allies. Uh, you're going to drop to your new hand size. You're also going to then be able to choose any of the cards in the library that you don't want to keep and replace them with new cards and then start it over once again. The way you're going to win is by simply defeating the Elder God, and the way you lose is by dying. Now, if you die, you're out of the game. However, your character is going to have after death abilities like this guy here. The acrobat flips, uh, flipped her last flip, but her fellow investigators can now attempt to nullify the Mythos deck in the same way that the acrobat did. So he's going to you're going to get to retain certain abilities in the game. Uh, and the time traveler, he gets to re retrace time back <laughs> and go back in time, which is pretty cool as well. And the game will continue to the next round and so on and so forth until something interesting happens. You die or you destroy the other god. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the gameplay and how it functions. Now we went ahead and set up the game already for two players. Each player has their total uh, health and stamina set up or sanity set up, and it's going to be the max for each player. They're all going to have their own backstories and their special abilities. For instance, this character here, he's able to go back in, in time, and of course in their after death effects, which can affect uh, the game differently depending on what happens. If you die, you're going to be out, but you actually have everybody else can use your abilities to some extent, which is pretty cool. They've got your 10 cards each. I've set up the library and or the shop here, five cards. All the monsters are out and ready to be used whenever our mythos card is drawn and we've chosen one of the random elder gods as well as one of the random locations. I have a bunch of these extra things here that are going to be used for health along with some die depending on the character's ability such as the acrobat. She can roll a die and if she gets a five or higher she can actually remove the mythos deck from being played each round which is very very powerful and I guess if she messes up the time traveler can revert and let her try and roll again. Uh, to begin the game obviously you can have one mythos card out and it says summon a number of players minus one of this specific type of monster which is this here and it if this specific Elder God is active, then you're actually going to summon a number of players plus one, which could be three. Then this card is going to be removed. Uh, go ahead and put it in the discard pile, and uh, the game will then continue. Uh, so then the first thing that's going to happen is the preparation phase, in which each player is going to get to have their hand size of five after shuffling their deck up. And in turn order, or whatever order you so choose, you can go ahead and have players look at their hand of cards and play cards that are going to gain them moxie. Now, this is the uh, this after this uh, phase where you're playing cards here, which is the preparation, you're going to then uh, place these down. These are going to give you moxie, in which case you can use to purchase cards here, such as I can choose to pitch, pick up this one, which is Steel Health, or this one over here, which is Spectral um, spe uh, spectral Razor, uh, take a Sanity Damage and gain three moxie. That's pretty useful here. So we'll take that, and it'll. Uh, th I actually purchased that, which is pretty sweet. Um, and then, of course, after you're done purchasing, you're going to replace that from the deck here, and uh, you can use your moxie, but you can't use it for uh, uh, buying more stuff. After you've bought everything with what you've placed down, uh, this is going to go into your hand, so you can use it for a uh, later round, but you can't purchase any more from the deck with this. Usually it's going to be for defensive abilities. These are all stagger cards, which are not going to help you, so you do not want to play them, so they're going to kind of sit in your hand. Uh, and then, and of course, the next player is going to get to go as well. He's got a bunch of sleuths, so he'll go ahead and play four of them here, and he can go ahead and purchase stuff as well. Maybe he wants these two things. Uh, this is a talisman, which is a piece of gear that actually gets put in front of you and stays there. And then this is a spell, which is a graft flesh. It's a take two minus two sanity damage and heal an investigator for two health. It's pretty useful. So it's basically, basically to heal two. Uh, and then after that, you're going to replace once again. Ba bam And then they go on to the next phase, which is going to be the phase in which the monsters all take effect, right? Which is the Elder God is going to activate, which is summon number of players minus three hounds. And whenever it is zero or less, it's going to always be one. So you're going to look through here and find the hounds, and you're going to put it into play. And then, uh, of course, it says, what's, what's after, after that? Minions each activation. 
um, then equipment cards, moxie, and healing is reduced by two. Okay, wow, that's that's nasty. Okay, so each of these guys have their own unique ability that affects the game in certain ways. After that happens, then of course you're going to draw a mythos card and do what it says. Oh, look at that. Investigators skip the combat phase this round, so no fighting is going to occur. That's really, really nasty. Other times, when you draw cards, you might have to deal with monsters, as well as uh, <laughs> you might have to deal with additional elder gods, or... Um, sorcerers, all these kind of things can pop out with a Mythos uh, deck. Then after you've gone ahead and resolved the Mythos deck, you're going to resolve all the minions and they're going to say what they do. This says the investigator with the lowest health takes two minus one health damage and you can simply remove the health from these guys here and then do the rest of them with all of them. So after all the minions are done, then it would move on to the combat phase. Each player can choose to use their cards in their hand to uh, do combat damage with their moxie. This, these, this moxie here is going to allow you to do damage to these guys. However, for this round, the combat phase has ended. If it didn't, however, you could actually play your cards and do damage. And if you do three damage to this guy, he takes three. You can either use the die here as damage, or you can use these cards here, well, along with these little things here that can track the health of each of the monsters. Which, either way, whatever works for you the best is, is going to be just fine. If you remove them, they're going to die. However, don't forget about the Mythos location. Sometimes they're going to be negative, like this one. If you kill one guy, he can regenerate. However, if you killed this guy here, he would be gone. If you killed him again, he would also be gone. So, this card can be very, very scary and very powerful. After that is concluded, the combat phase is done, you're going to take all the cards you've got and you're going to put them in your discard pile. And, oh, these, this is my actual hand here, whatever. <laughs> put it in your discard pile and then you're going to simply draw five again, in which case should be the rest of your remaining cards here. And whenever you have to draw cards from your deck, I guess yes, these ones here. Whenever you draw cards from your deck, you're going to shuffle the rest from your discard pile and put them into your library so you can choose to draw again. And also, don't forget any of the cards here that you don't want. Let's say you don't really want this one here or this one here. You can go ahead and discard them and add new ones to the store, which is going to allow you to purchase new things on your next turn, which is a really, really nice aspect of the game. And then it's going to continue once again. You'll be drawing the cards. You'll be playing them. Remember to use all your gear in front of you. You're going to also acquire allies in the game. Let's see if I can find a couple interesting allies for you. Here's a bunch of spells. There's actions. Here's an ally. Whenever you play this guy, he's going to cost five, and you can put him into play when you get him. It says, while Henry is active, add one slot to, your, to the public library, which means, bam, another card is going to come out that you can purchase. How useful. And the only time these guys are going to go away is usually by minion cards or even by the boss cards. Uh, gear is also going to work similarly. You can have two pieces of gear, and you put them out after you buy them and they do something different. This one says wearing this grants one additional moxie for every card played in the planning phase. So you're going to be able to get more money with that one here. So pretty useful, right? And you're going to continue the game. The next uh, next portion is after you buy the stuff. The combat is going to happen with all these guys. They all, all their abilities will take effect. And, the, and uh, of course, not the minions here, mythos, <laughs> minions. Mythos is going to be flipped over and something's going to happen. You're going to summon certain monsters and then the monsters will interact with, the, with you in some negative way. And then you're going to be playing cards to do damage once again to the monsters trying to remove them. Of course, the goal being to kill this guy here. If all the Elder Gods have been removed, you're going to win the game. Now remember, certain Mythos cards can actually bring new Elder Gods into the mix, so you got to be careful about that. But in general, you're going to start with just one of them, and this is the health tracker you'll use. There's also a nice little explanation for each of the planning and then the combat phase, as well as the cleanup phase uh, on these cards here, which is nice. And the game continues. And that's the basic idea of the game, the expansion of the Cthulhu deck building game. Let's come up and talk about it. So what does it say about the new Cthulhu deck building game. Well, first of all, the original game is super solid, really fun. I got to play. I got both of the games to play. I played the first one and I played this one and I mixed them all together and played them and they all work really well. There's tons of new characters added like a judge, a big game hunter. You got the acrobat, the time traveler who comes back once again to try and fix the problems he, he uh, did not actually fix in the first game. Blacksmith and reporter. You got a medic. You got a con man. You got a, all, all kinds of stuff. There's tons. A gambler, right? And they all have their own unique abilities and their own after death abilities abilities as well. Um, and it's just going to be dependent on each Each one of them has a strength. Um, some of them are better than others, I think. So it depends on how difficult you want to make the game. There's also an easy and a hard mode. If you want to increase the game, the, dif the difficulty of the game, you can simply draw multiple uh, Mythos cards. Uh, and you can also set up where you have multiple Elder Gods in play to start the game off. It's up to you, really. So as far as difficulty goes, you have that wide variety. If you want to play easy mode, the game's going to be pretty simple, straightforward. And it probably won't be super challenging, but just challenging enough, if, especially if it's your first deck build, you've ever played. There's a lot to go through in this game. I like the fact that the minions aren't going to be drawn, but actually summoned from the Mythos cards. And so you know what all the minions do. It's just whether or not they're going to come out. And whether or not they're going to be more and more painful and powerful, depending on the type of Elder God, because Elder God's going to distinguish how uh, minion, minions come out and what type are more powerful.
powerful than others based on their specific abilities. You got a nice life tracking things here. I think for most of the Elder Gods are big stuff like the Horror of Dunwich. You're going to want to use these big things, but I like to use the dice for the uh, smaller cards because I think it's easier to deal with them. The gear is new in the game, right? It's going to be something you put in front of you and it gives you a power. They're super strong. I love that. I love feeling super powerful in this game and you feel super powerful. All the cards mixed together and there's so many combinations. There's a ton of cards here. If you already have the base game for the original game, this adds so much more to the game and there's so many unique cards in here that you're never going to have a problem playing this game more than once and having the same game results. First time we played, we smashed the uh, Elder God. The second time we play, we barely beat him, and the third time we played, we lost completely. Now that has a lot to do with the Mythos locations being somewhat powerful in one way or another way, as well as some of the other gods, Elder Gods are stronger. So if you actually don't even want to mix it up, you want to simply choose the right ones to play based on the level of difficulty you want to provide for you, you can do that. And also, working with multiple players is more and more fun, and I think it provides a little bit more ease of play. I don't think I noticed any, like, uh, any imperfections in the game as far as it goes other than the fact that you can choose to play really easy mode or really difficult mode it's going to be up to you and in some portions if you play too difficult you're going to lose because the game is very very hard um there's combinations that are crazy like i was showing you the time traveler and the acrobat right the acrobat can stop mythos cards from spawning and the time traveler is able to go back in time so if this player is not able to roll the dice to prevent the mythos from spawning the time traveler says let's go back into a different phase it says that any time the time traveler can once per round rewind time to the beginning of the previous phase. Oh, so cool. All the characters have some cool abilities, but my personal favorite has always been the Time Traveler. And also, what's really unique too is not only was he in the original game, but he was also in um, one of their other games that I think is currently out on Kickstarter, or was, was currently out on Kickstarter. Um, and that also has the, the character as the main character. I, I like time traveling aspects, and I love this feel. This has the full Cthulhu experience, and there's so many Elder Gods to choose from just in this expansion alone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten different ones. Mythos locations, which are added. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more mythos locations. There's tons of gear. There's tons of allies that stay on the field and help you. And the combination of cards in this library is crazy. Uh, unfortunately, the mythos deck also has some scary stuff in it. Now, it's not as likely that they're going to pop up, but if they do, you're going to be in trouble, such as having to deal with active gods, uh, uh, elder gods. So this one says summon a certain amount of void orbs. If it's an active elder god, it's going to be increased based on that amount. Or it's going to be this one here, the shadow of the old one there's not very many of these in the deck but it says summon number of players minus four elder gods so if you're playing with five players it's going to be one playing with six it'll be uh, two however you're always going to spawn one whenever it's zero or less anyway so adding an extra elder god to the game makes it so much more difficult but there's tons of really great cards in here and there's tons of different active uh, actions that are events that take place like i was showing you solar flare pops up you don't get a combat phase oh which makes the game so dangerous because the next round you're gonna be taking so much damage you have a lot of health and a lot of sanity but it goes away pretty quickly especially if you're playing on hard mode which is the mode i like um what's also interesting too which i don't uh think I, well, I was almost not going to talk about them as much because I didn't think they were that interesting. But after playing multiple, multiple times, I started realizing that Stagger is super cool because certain Elder Gods and certain Mythos cards actually make you play cards from your hand whether you want to. And it's going to be like, oh, randomly shuffle your hand and play a card. Oh, you managed to stagger it yourself because you left it in your deck. You don't have to actually do that because you can get rid of cards based on the library cards if you pull them out by trashing them. But if you still have them, they're not only dead cards, which makes it difficult, but also play Playing them hurts you, and the other gods kind of intuitively know that there's bad stuff in your hand. So, also, not only that, but they pull other cards from your hand. They can just be not played at the most opportune moment, right? Overall, though, this game's beautiful. I love the artwork. I love the theme. I'm all big Cthulhu fan. If you like Cthulhu games, you're going to like, and you like deck builders, you're going to like the Cthulhu deck building game. You're going to like the experience. It immerses you. It's fun. I have played this so many times, and this is a long game, and it has a lot of setup. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, usually with these games, I only can play so many times, but with this one, I just kept coming back to it because I really enjoyed enjoyed it. Um, as far as I said, the only thing negative I guess I could say was if you play it on easy mode, it's going to be pretty easy. If you play it on extreme hard mode, it's going to be way too hard. But that's really the point, isn't it? And you're fighting against Elder Gods. They should be difficult. So overall, I rate this game with my seal of approval. It's an excellent game and it's staying in my collection. I look forward to seeing it on Kickstarter, the Cthulhu Horror and Dunwich expansion for the Cthulhu, a deck building game in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of the videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out the new Cthulhu deck builder expansion in the description below. It feels good taking 30 damage off of 
of an elder boss. It really does. It, 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 it's supposed to hit in somebody else in a deck builder, which kind of can suck, and you're like, oh, now we're fighting against each other. This one has that fully cooperative experience. I don't know why, but I just love feeling overpowered while at the same time, Doom is lurking right next to you. Ugh, so good. I've, I just I just really enjoy it, and I think you guys would as well, especially like the Cthulhu style. I can't keep talking about the praise of this game, but it's really good. It's good. It's good. Also, check out our website, unfilteredgame.com, blog posts, Kickstarter lists, more, as well as checking out everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, two great sites, got tons of good stuff as well on it, and as well my personal friend, uh, Fernand, the Cardboard Stacker. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to investigating the horror of Dunwich with you all, and hopefully not getting our souls sucked away next time.